I now have a very pleasant task to perform. On the platform, you will see, and I'm asking you to agree with me, a man of charm and intelligence, a man of great wit, a man of sartorial elegance, yes, a really good looking man, a man overflowing with the joy of life and love for his fellow human beings. And when you look to my left, <laughs> I stole that opening from Norman now. <laughs> But just in case some of you weren't here and to hear it, I thought I'd repeat it. Thank you, Norman. <laughs> now, the introduction of our speaker. <laughs> As most of you know, in the past we have invited very special persons from abroad to be our keynote speakers at these anniversary services. We have had authors, we have had ministers, we have from the international movement, we have had pastors, we have had presidents, and we have had, generally speaking, lots of luminaries flying into Jamaica to help us to celebrate. However, this year, we have turned tack. We didn't look overseas. We stayed right here at the temple, and we chose our own very, very special VIP in fact, our own president, our spiritual leader and pastor. I give you folks, Reverend John, the beloved. And I quite agree, you're every bit as good looking as I. <laughs> now listen, nobody complains that the service gone over an hour this morning, but I'm going to be brief. Ish. <laughs> so, welcome all uh, to the beautiful Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, and welcome to those who join us in consciousness on the World Wide Web. When I was a little bitty picnic uh, in Jamaican, uh, translated from Jamaican, that means when I was a little child, and got on my grandmother's very last nerve, she would roll her eyes up to the ceiling and she would say, Lord God, guide me and pilot me. Do, before I send a picnic back to you. <laughs> Lord, guide my footsteps on this journey before I send this child back to you. I am grateful that in those days, the global positioning system, GPS for short, had not yet been invented, or Granny would have been able to find the shortest route for my journey to the father's home. <laughs> and speaking of a short journey home, a friend of mine who is a gadget freak recently installed the Jamaican uh, GPS in his car. He was headed to my house for a visit and decided to test his new GPS, which I believe is called a Tom Tom. Well, to his amazement, the GPS directed him off the main thoroughfare and through private property. <laughs> yes. Actually, in all fairness, I have also read stories of folks um, in the USA, following GPS directions and getting lost in the desert. So Jamaica doesn't have a, 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 you know, the, the patent on that. But I have to ask my friend if the instructions are in Jamaican patois. Can you hear it? Yo, my youth, after 300 yard turn left. Cho, what do you mean? You know, say, say you passed the turn off. All right, all right. Take a right through the yard, yeah. <laughs> And you come out on halfway tree road, see? Oh, what kind of idiot business this? Jano, may I try to steer you right, but you're not listening to me. All right, turn around the vehicle, I reverse back. <laughs> okay, if you had trouble following my yardy talk, or are interested in learning everything you need to know about the language we Jamaicans speak among ourselves, there is an excellent new book out titled Basic Jamaican. It's spelled B-E-I-S-I-K, J-U-M-I-E-K-A-N. And it is available from Amazon.com. 
And those of you who have been here for a few years will be thrilled to know it is written by former Temple of Light member Larry Chang, who now resides in Washington, DC. Go in Amazon and you will find it. I've titled my encouragement today, Make God Your GPS. And would like to start with a Sufi teaching story from a wonderful little book called uh, the, Sa the Wandering Sage, given to me by two old friends. They're not old, but the friendship is, who um, predate the GPS invention. And so does the story. Want to hear a story about this? <laughs> A scholar of old who prided himself on his fine intellect and his ability to use logic to solve problems had to go on a journey. He knew half of the way. He knew his way to the halfway point, but was certain that he could figure out the rest once he got to the halfway point so he could get to his destination safely. So he climbed on his donkey and started out. The first half of his journey entered, uh, ended in a small town. And he went into the town square and he asked the local people to introduce him to the town's most truthful person and the town's biggest liar. He figured that the town's truthful person would tell him the safest and shortest route to his destination. And the town's biggest liar um, would tell him some BS, that means belief system. Um, <laughs> carry him wide, as we say in Jamaica. So the townspeople introduced him to the most truthful person who said, ah, yes, my friend, take the mountain path. Then they produced the town's greatest liar, and he said, um, take the mountain path. This perplexed the, the, the scholar. Both the truthful person and the liar had said, take the mountain path. So he asked other people around the town square what was the way to his destination. Some said, go across the fields. Some said, no, take the river, go by the river. And others said, take the mountain path. He was still perplexed, but he eventually decided to take the mountain path. And he safely reached his destination, which was a large town. He went to an inn for food and shelter, and while he was dining, he related to other people in the dining area what had happened in the small town. And the sage was at the inn, listening with amusement to the scholar's story. When the scholar had finished, the sage said, your problem, stranger, was that you relied only on your own logic. You never considered the logic of other people. Or did you consult the inner? wisdom within you. The scholar looked even more perplexed. So the sage said with a smile, you know, the river is the easiest route. And you could easily have had a boat, and you would have, you would have got there in record time. So the liar suggested the mountain path. The truthful man, though, noticed that you were on a donkey, making the mountain path easy, and the river impossible. Now, friends, one of the habits I picked up sitting at the feet of my teacher and spiritual mother, Dr. Emma Lumsden, is always having used my logic to rely on the inner wisdom. And she often says, Father, I say this, what do you say? Father, this is my opinion. Guide me and pilot me. Not because she wanted to send me her student back to the creator, but because she wanted to know the correct way to train me and to teach me. Jesus, the way shower, also taught us how to rely on that inner GPS, which is so powerful. The power is at hand, and that was his message. You will recall an account of when he and his disciples got caught in a storm one night at sea. You remember that story? The wind rose to a gale and waves lashed the boat, and the disciples became terrified that the boat would be swamped and they would be drowned. Fear, panic, and helplessness seized their minds. But remember that in that same boat, going through the very same experience, was Jesus. And what was he doing? He was sleeping serenely. 
So the disciples awakened him, urging him to save them. And according to the story, in an instant he was on his feet, commanding the waves to be still. And according to the story, like living things, they were obedient to his word and subsided. And I love it because the Bible says, and there was a great calm. And there was a great calm. What does this story tell us? First, we must understand that this is not just about Jesus and his disciples um, 2,000 odd years ago. It is a story to help us realize and utilize the power of God that is at our command and our disposal. Jesus' entire life and ministry was dedicated to revealing the power of God that is available to all people. And this power heals minds and bodies and life situations that may be out of alignment with their original perfection. It does so when we truly believe in and act upon that belief. So you have to act as though you know it is available Speak as though you know it is available. And whatever, whatsoever you do when you're in that state of, of consciousness, knowing that the power is with you, whatever you ask will be done unto you. The storm at sea represents any storm that might blow up on the sea of your own life. The panic the disciples expressed represents the panic you may feel when you are faced with some great challenge and you feel as though you're going to be swamped or go under. Listen to me, friends. The power is right where you are, no matter how stormy life gets. And the way to get the power flowing when you feel like you're losing your grip is to stop reacting negatively and activate your God positioning system by acting constructively. Like the, music, the beautiful Jesus, say to the storm in your experience, peace, be still. Let us say it together. Peace. Say to your stormy relationship with your partner, your child, or your co-worker, peace, be still. Say to your concern over your children, or the economy, or the unrest in the world, I say it every Tuesday, my friends, before I knock on that forbidding iron door at the General Penitentiary in Kingston to go and conduct our class or remedial ministry down there. I said it to the people in Halfway Tree last Sunday, peace, be still. So friend, let that GPS, that power within you, that God power, take your attention off lack and limitation and guide you in the path to right useness of your God-given power. Refuse to be part of in harmony. Refuse to countenance failure or whatever your, you, your challenge may be. Give your attention and therefore your energy to the power that can give you health, happiness, success, abundance, and harmony. Dr. Ernest Holmes, who gave the world this great teaching known as Science of Mind, writes in the textbook of the same name, uh, page 146, paragraph 2, and I quote, We have within us a power which is greater than anything we shall ever contact, a power that can overcome every obstacle in our experience and set us safe, satisfied, and at peace, healed and prosperous in a new light and a new life, unquote. The Apostle Paul also urged and I quote, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. What, now what does this mean? Paul is telling us to rise in consciousness to a God-oriented state of mind. And you all spoke about transformation this morning. That's what transformation means. Changing your mind about what appears to be the storms and the vicissitudes of life. As Holmes puts it, and I quote, we are given the power to sit in the midst of our lives and direct their activities. So this brings me to your assignment. You couldn't get away on an anniversary Sunday without an assignment. Hi. Cha. Your assignment, should you decide to undertake it, is to spend a little time this evening reviewing the past six months of your year. 
If you wrote goals for 2014, take a look at what you wrote. If you participated in our goal setting workshop in January, you would have written some intentions. But if you didn't actually write your goals, still review what your journey has been to this point. And if you didn't write down some goals, now I want you this evening to set some goals for the remainder of this year. And on the top of that page that you're writing your goals for the final six months of the year, I want you to write, my God positioning system guides my journey. My God positioning system guides my journey. The way forward is assured. Can we say that together? My God positioning system guides my journey. The way forward is assured. To your neighbor say, with God as your GPS, the way forward is assured. With God as your GPS, the way forward is assured. With God as your GPS, the way forward is assured. Next Sunday, you are invited to stay for an update on all the exciting things that have been happening as part of our center's way forward. You know, and I mentioned how people just step up to the plate when there is a need. I came here last Wednesday evening for Labyrinth Walk, which was my day off, and I see uh, Norman Wright, Faye Kessler, Tina Sherman, Denise Inglis, a whole group of people. I don't know who else was there because I, I sneaked by. And they were having a talk about how do we raise funds, how do we support this temple's mission. Um, of getting this truth out. Unasked, un, un choreographed, undesigned, just stepping up to the plate. Thank you so much. Thank you, Norman. Thank you, folks. It's just another example of how people are interested in charting the way forward. So next Sunday, we're going to look at what has been done and pat ourselves on the back. And then we also need to look at what needs to be done. And we want your input and we want your involvement. So plan to be here. I'm going to cut off a little off of next Sunday's service too so that we, it doesn't take us quite so long. Friends, with God as your GPS, you can't get lost. Or as Larry Chang would say in basic Jamaican, when God there with you, you can't lost. You see me? So all I know, walk good and happy anniversary.